Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship today. Um, Kathy asked me if uh, there was anything special happening today. I had a hum and a think, and I thought, yeah, the creator of the universe is coming to turn up to meet us. That's pretty special, actually, when you think about it. Every service has this beautiful potential in it that God himself is coming to meet with us. So let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Now, God, we thank you that it is you who seek us. It is you who have sent your messengers, the angels, bringing good news to the shepherds, that the Saviour has come. Not that they called the Saviour, not that they brought the Saviour, not that they earned a Saviour, but the Saviour has come to seek them. Well, Lord, thank you for the angels who have come to our lives, special people in our lives who have brought the good news about Jesus, who have brought the changes in ourselves that or have opened our eyes to the, the grace of God and the great love of God. We thank you for those very human angels who have been influential in our lives. We thank you, our God, for those times when we are those angels, for the privilege we've had of uh, sharing the good news into someone's life. What an honour, what a privilege. The Lord, we thank you for the angels, both human and divine. We pray today, our God, your blessing on this worship. May we encounter and live with you, even as you intended. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, um, we haven't got a band today, but we do have uh, online worship, so uh, particularly favourable to those at home, and uh, greetings to you. Uh, let's stand and sing together, Joy to the World. Take the time to rustle about and get your uh, your bread, your uh, whether you've got water or you've managed to sneak some wine in. Say uh, Merry Christmas to you all. There's been a bit of a chatter recently around whether or not Jesus was born in a uh, in a stable or not in a manger, and. It's gone on as long as people have liked to chatter about Christmas. I remember when I first studied, people were going, oh no, Jesus was actually born in a cave, and now people are talking, oh, Jesus was born in the bottom room of the family house, all sorts of things. And it's kind of irrelevant, because the intent of the passages we have, of the different accounts, is that it was unpleasant. 
that there was a breach of hospitality, there was a failure of family, that the circumstances that Mary and Joseph found themselves in were unnecessarily hard. And that's the thing I want to think about as we come into communion, is that their time didn't have to be like it was. Yeah, there was no room in the inn. That's what's being said. Right? And everyone knows that if a pregnant woman turned up at your house about to give birth, you would bring her in, you would give her your bed, whatever it took. At least that's the story we tell about ourselves because we like to picture ourselves as basically good people. But we also know that there's lots of stories where that doesn't happen, where we fall short and where communion becomes necessary. Where we pause and we think, okay, so at this point Mary and Joseph probably have had the hardest time of their lives and it's not going to get easier. Herod's going to come, come along and kill a whole bunch of people, babies, which is pretty stink. They're going to flee to Egypt as refugees and stay there for a while. That's not going to be easy, unnecessarily hard. It's a good thing they got the gift of gold because it's not like they were able to use that as seed money to start a small business. They needed to use that so that they could all not die. And Christmas is a time where we, we like to think, okay, everything's going to be great and we're going to try and get together, particularly after our last couple of years. We're going to try and make things right and that effort is 100% worth it. That some of us are here, maybe we're nursing headaches, maybe we're trying to get over some of the conversations that happened yesterday or trying to consider what sort of person we are now having had some conversations that maybe we shouldn't have. And we have to consider whether or not we have made life unnecessarily hard. And so this is the whole thing though because Jesus proclaims this is the year of the Lord. This is the time of the forgiveness of debt. And when he... Uh, said, this is the bread broken for you. This is my body. This is what he's talking about. He's talking about forgiveness for that sin, for that moment where we made life unnecessarily difficult, where we didn't give aid when it was required, when we could have, and when we were overly resentful at not receiving the aid that someone couldn't feasibly give us. And so Jesus broke bread. And the whole thing with this is my blood poured out for you is we are, we are reset. It's the blood poured on, like wiped on the doorway to tell the spirit of the Lord, don't kill everyone. We're not going to, this is not a viable solution. We're not going to do that. Jesus, God has a much greater victory in mind where the entire world, creation is restored to him. It's not some measly ferret victory where only 1% of creation manages to make its way through the door. We're talking about God here. This is a total victory. And that's where we put our hope. And so there was a cost to it, of course. You know, there's some necessary suffering that happened when God, when we broke the bread, when Jesus was broken on the cross. And so I'm, what's going to happen is I'm going to briefly pray and then we'll in turn, we'll take our bread and then we'll take, in my case, my water, the wine. And then I'll pray again very briefly and we'll carry on. So God, I thank you for giving us this time to reflect, to consider what we've done and how we've responded to the things done to us. And I thank you even more that you've given us an opportunity to be restored and the possibility of seeing restoration in our lives and our relationships and in our world. Thank you for that. And I ask that we can step into this moment with 
a real hope, a hope that understands just how much it is that we're getting out of this. In your grace, amen. blood poured out for us. And so, again, as promised, we, we participate in the ritual of repentance and forgiveness once again. We, we step forward to you, Lord, recognizing that our contribution was small, but that possibly the biggest thing that we can do coming forward is to accept that it was real and to move on as if that forgiveness was true. And so I ask that we can go forward and we can treat our friends and our family and our neighbors accordingly. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 2 verses 41 to 52. Every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they travelled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they didn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favour with God and man. This is the word of the Lord. No, we don't have any kids here today, but that's okay. I'll introduce you to the last symbol. So, uh, yeah, so you can see today we've got the angels hanging up there and I'll just add another angel to uh, add to the story. I think about angels is angels are, are, are quite interesting. If, if you do a bit of a study of the Bible about angels, uh, it's a little bit different to what you think. You know, uh, you've got in your mind a, a, an image of angels and obviously this is drawn on that sort of image. Uh, they've got wings, they sort of look like people, um, they're a bit androgynous, so they're neither male nor female, um, and they seem to, to fly around, um, and they seem to glow in the dark when we've got pictures of the shepherds and the angels. And, um, but, you know, some of the pictures are also about angels with six wings and um, eyes everywhere in a rather unnerving sort of way. Um, angels that are called seraphim, which uh, means fire. So you've got an image of a fiery angel. Uh, and um, sometimes they think of the great pillar of fire that was moving in front of the people of Israel as God's angel. But the one thing that um, sort of binds a lot of these together is the word, is the meaning of the Greek word for angel, which is simply messenger. They're messengers from God. 
So God has a message to deliver. Um, people can't see God face to face and live. So we have this sort of intermediary spiritual being that brings the message from God. And uh, it's, it's uh, intriguing. We're not sure what to make of angels uh, overall. We sort of think that they've got personalities of their own. Some seem to have names like Gabriel or Michael. Uh, some people go to shops and they, they buy little things that represent their guardian angel because we like to think we've all got a guardian angel overlooking us. Um, but of course, at the end of the day, uh, they're merely speaking God's words. It's God who is our guardian angel. Um, any angel that we might depict, um, sorry for those who have got little pictures up on their walls, <laughs> but uh, it's actually God who is the power, who is the protective power. Um, that we see in those images. So today the power comes to the shepherds and uh, pronounces to them peace on earth. And it's quite a momentous sort of message uh, they, as they sang that message. And it couldn't just be said, it had to be sung. Uh, the, uh, they were also given a message to go find a baby in a manger and I love what Alistair said. Uh, the point about the manger was that it was so unusual that there was only one of them in Bethlehem. <laughs> Finding a baby in a manger was really easily, really easy. You couldn't mistake it for any other baby because who on earth puts a baby in a manger? That's the point. Um, so the, the contradiction of the Saviour being born and being in a manger was strong. So here the, there we have the angels. And we'll, we'll tease out more about the angels. Hopefully you've got an angel on your Christmas tree. And now we're going to sing about the angels singing glory. If you were here yesterday, you would have heard this song. Um, if not, you're about to join in something a little different. The blue parts are your parts. So angels singing glory. <clears throat> Easy to pick up. You'll find everyone here today. Nice to see you here on Boxing Day and good morning to those worshipping at home and uh, viewing us on the live stream. Uh, it's great to know that uh, you're with us as well. And uh, today I just want to pay particular uh, tribute or say a special hello to our friend Margaret Fluke who tunes in every week. Some of you will remember Margaret from Church of Christ Days years ago. She's been tuning in every week because she sent us a, a letter uh, on our admin at, uh, no, welcome, on the welcome at livingfaithchurch.org.au email address to say that she has been uh, tuning in. So great to have you with us, Margaret, and everyone else at home as well. 
So if you're wondering what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the camera so that they can see me <laughs> okay, and know that I'm talking to them. My name's Loris, if you don't know me, and we have got some visitors here today. Uh, we have uh, Janine's brother, Peter. So welcome to Peter. Nice to have you here. And we have Pat and John over there. Thank you. Uh, yes, so nice to have you with us. And we've got some family of Rob and Nola, uh, whose names I don't have. So would you like to introduce? Jenny and Sophie. Hello. Nice to have you with us today as well. Have I missed anyone? Because it'd be terrible to miss somebody. No, I think we have um, regulars, as we might refer to you, or um, our friends. Uh, so great to have you all here. Um, there aren't many notices today, but uh, I will just point out that uh, Vic is on holidays, uh, so he's not here today, and um, he's back on the, is it the 10th? The 10th. Yes, so on the 10th of January, Vic will be back, and that's when Graham and Kathy go on, on uh, their break. So, um, yes, we hope you have a great break in a couple of weeks' time. And uh, so Graham is your contact person while Vic is away, and Vic's back on the 10th of March. Up uh, March. What am I saying? I don't know why I said March. <laughs> Just jumped ahead two months in the calendar. The 10th of January. I'm already thinking, you know, the year ahead, because the next thing on my mind is the family camp, and these um, uh, are available. These forms are available in on the table in, in the narthex if you'd like to pick one up today, um, or if you'd like to have a think about coming to what we call our family camp. But when we refer to family, we refer to our church family. So it doesn't matter what age you are; you are welcome to come along to our church camp. Uh, the uh, theme of the camp is noticing God every day. And I think that's relevant to all of us. So uh, if you are interested in heading down to Anglesey, it's the uh, 25th to the 27th of February. And um, so I, I did get that month right. Yes, February. Um, so that's not very far away. You might like to think about coming along. Last, week, last year, last week, no, last year, we had 40 um, people head down to the camp. It was a great time, uh, lovely to spend time down in Anglesey, beautiful part of the world. I don't think there's anything else I need to say, it, oh, except there's something from uh, Bill. I'd like to thank very much the um, people that uh, came along and worked very hard um, on Saturday. And um, we raised at the barbecue um, just a bit over $800, which um, is fantastic. So all those people who helped out, those who came along and ate sausages, um, we had a great time. and. Uh, I was really pleased with the result. Thanks very much. And thank you, God, for a good day. Yes. Now, after our service today, there is morning tea, if you'd like to stay for that. Uh, we will also have the opportunity for anyone who needs prayer, personal prayer, you can come to the front of the chapel area here and someone will be available to pray with you. So do take advantage of that if you would like prayer today. But we're now going to uh, come to a time of prayer uh, together uh, to bring our prayers to God for his mission and ministry in the world today. So would you please pray with me? Our God, generous Father, Messiah and guiding Spirit, we thank you for our journey through Advent when we waited to celebrate the coming of Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you for joyous celebrations yesterday when he was honoured. We honoured the birth of our King. Today we bow and worship you again and we ask, what now, Lord? What now would you have us do?
And so we pray, we ask you, Messiah, to teach us to follow the way. And we pray, asking you, Spirit, please live within us as our guide, sharing wisdom, sharing grace and peace. And we pray, we ask you, Father, please provide us the resources we need in our mission as we follow the way. We bring our concerns to you, God. We pray for Vic, for Kate and for Graham in our ministry team. And we pray for their families too. Please work within them to bring about your, your way here at Greensboro. We also pray for church council and our ministry groups as they seek to guide and plan and bring about the fulfilment of our vision. We pray for our ministries through POND, through the Young Adults Group and other life groups. We pray for our members, each and every one of them. We pray for those who are unwell. May they know healing. We pray for those who are grieving or remembering a loss. We pray that they will be comforted. We pray for any who are anxious for the future. We pray that they will know your peace and know that you walk with them. We pray for our community that's been so affected by the COVID pandemic. May they know hope for the future. May they know strength and health. And for any who have been divided because of COVID, whether it's through distancing or through differing attitudes, we pray for a resolution of these divisions. We pray for our community leaders. May they guide us. May they have always the best interests of the community at heart. And may we learn to trust them to lead us. Father, we think of those who are away on holidays. May they be refreshed. May they encounter some of your nature, your creation, and your presence in the time they have away from their homes. But keep them safe while they are away. And for those of us who are here today, we pray that they will know your touch in their lives as they worship. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're now going to have our offering. Just a little reminder that the people who are coming around with the offering plates, uh, we, they'll just be walking past. If you've brought your offering today, um, then just uh, indicate to them that you wish to put something in the plate and uh, we won't be actually passing the plates, the offering plates along the rows. So just uh, so that you're aware of that. And um, a, another reminder that for those who are doing their, their online transfer of their offering, please uh, know that, that God knows your, your uh, giving and uh, that you are blessed by your gifts to the church here, uh, whether it's uh, something in the plate or it's an online transaction. So thank you very much. Are we singing? I haven't brought mine. We are singing.
O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Is that going to be a recording? Yes. And we're going to sing it. So, okay, we're going to stand up. Thanks very much. That mourns in lonely exile here Until the Son of God appear Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel Shall come to thee, O Israel Spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice. Division see and be thyself our king of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Our second reading is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, 
hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. So we have shepherds and we've got angels, and the angels are singing glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. It's quite a, a striking thing, this proclamation of peace. And it, because we think of peace in so many different ways, it sort of leaves it to our imagination. I have no doubt what the shepherds thought peace was. It was getting rid of the Romans and having their own nation so they would live at peace. So uh, no more violence and no more war as their day-to-day -day life experience. So that's what they thought of peace. And often we think of that way as well. We talk about peace talks and things like that. But overall, the word peace or shalom in the Old Testament had a much bigger understanding. And really, it meant that uh, people lived the right way. That's what peace meant. So uh, peace was a change in the character of people, this peace on earth. There'd be an end to war because there'd be an end to injustice. There'd be an end to injustice because uh, instead of putting ourselves first and doing what we want to do, we actually care for our neighbour. So this is the, the description, really, of what the angels are announcing, even if uh, the shepherds uh, may not have quite received that message, would have been a bit beyond their ability, probably, to, to grasp what was coming their way. But for us, peace is what Christmas is all about. We've got our candles of joy, love, peace, and hope, and peace is a central aspect of it. And in our reading today, peace was mentioned as well. So what is this peace that Christ is bringing? How does it happen? For most of us, I guess, you know, we'd like to think that uh, Christ brings peace by uh, changing all those nasty people, the baddies, the evil ones, and all that sort of stuff, and so the rest of us can get on with life. Um, but our passage in Colossians invites a bit more self-reflection than that. Who is it who's causing this problem with the world? And if we can't actually um, uh, say that the end of war would simply bring peace, what would bring peace? And so our passage brings it to us in Colossians. And here it is. You've taken off the old self with its practices, which is sinful practices. They gave a list just before in the passage. And have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. This is how Christ brings peace. The personal transformation. For each one of us, this is where peace takes place. There is a change that takes place in our hearts, in our thinking, in our attitudes, and in our habits. This is where the beginning of peace lies, right here. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me is true to what the scriptures say. You can't change what other people do and think. You can influence it, but you can change with the Holy Spirit what you do and think and how you behave. So this is what's going to bring world peace. You, you and I, removing the old self, with its selfish ways and sinful ways, and putting on the new self, which is the Holy Spirit helps us to do, which is being renewed, and that's an ongoing word. Being renewed means continuously being renewed. It's not a one-of thing um, that uh, you simply change all your attitudes and behaviour on one particular day. So we go on, uh, and it paints this beautiful picture. What does this peaceful world look like? In Colossians it says, here it is. Here, in this peaceful world, there is no Gentile or Jew, which was one of the, how can we put it, probably racism is the simplest way of talking about it. So here there is no racism. There is no circumcised or uncircumcised, which is uh, divisions of religion um, and 
we go on to there is no barbarian and Scythian, um, which is another way of putting um, the, um, I guess, snobbery that we have about uh, who is civilised and who is uncivilised. Um, to put it in modern terms, uh, we talk about uh, free democracies and then there's the other lot. So there's none of that in the kingdom of God. Rah, 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 they're all awful. Uh, slave or free, which is economic difference. There is none of this rich and poor stuff going on. So here in the kingdom of God, where people are actually transforming, getting rid of the old self, putting on the new self, these divisions are being got rid of. And these are the divisions that wreck and ruin this world. So it's no surprise that Paul in this letter in Colossians is saying that the peace that God brings begins here. The peace that changes the world begins here. So they, they go hand in hand. And so he focuses quite strongly. But Christ is all and is in all. And there's the heart of the matter. That the thing that brings about real change and not just superficial change and not just political correctness um, and, and uh, being woke as their word is these days, the difference between that is that Christ is in us, bringing about genuine change. Not pretend change or put on change, but genuine change. Christ is the one who brings that, who brings peace on earth. And so we go on, therefore as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. And today in the sermon, I, I don't intend to explain these words to you. They're, they mean what they mean. Uh, what I would instead invite you to do is, I'm going to do a couple of things. I invite you to meditate on two things. Where are these qualities working well in my life? Christ has worked in my life and actually I do have compassion. I, do, I have been showing kindness. I know where. I have at times shown humility and gentleness and patience. So to invite you to reflect and to just give a little thank you prayer to God where this is working well in your life. And then after that, another little prayer, which is, dear God, where can I work better? So giving thanks for the progress you've made because remember we are being renewed constantly Getting better is the idea. So I'll allow you um, uh, some time to meditate now. Where are these things going well in me? And give thanks. And where might they go better? The verses continue about other qualities that we need to have for peace on earth. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. I invite you now to spend another minute's time of reflection. Where in my life has this worked well and give thanks? And where might I do better?
And finally, in the list of virtues, he has over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. Again, this word peace keeps coming out, doesn't it? The peace of Christ rule in your hearts. The angels cried out, peace on earth, but it begins with peace in your hearts. It, they proclaim the rule of Christ, but the rule of Christ begins in our hearts. There's a consistency in the Christian message there. And we can't have a Christian faith that doesn't attend to our hearts and our relationship with God. And uh, also within this passage, you notice it talks about one body. So it's a particularly particular focus on our relationships within the church. So some of these virtues are actually talking about how you get on as a community in the life of the church. And the reason for that is that the, uh, the church is meant to be sort of a, a taste of how this actually works, how peace on earth works. And uh, it, it's meant to be a taste of that, not because the church gets along perfectly, uh, but because there are differences. The, the um, model that's held up to the wider community is not having a lack of differences, but is how we handle our differences with grace, bearing with one another, forgiving each other's sins when we sin against each other. All of these things are a model of how just ordinary human beings um, rub up against each other and push through, find a pathway of love and forgiveness, forbearance and patience and kindness and grace. So, uh, yeah, attend to our church life together. We're not just here receiving a service like people who, who go to a shop receive a service. Here we're receiving the grace of God into our hearts. We are community. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And the bit that I like about this particular passage is that it says, whatever you do, which is an open-ended statement, isn't it? It's not saying that Christians have to do this particular thing or that particular thing. It's actually quite a creative thing. Whatever you end up doing, then do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So what is it that you do? Is it uh, repairing motorcycles like Vic? <laughs> is it um, cleaning the church like Liz? Uh, is it... Um, gardening or having people over for hospitality. Whatever it is, whatever you do, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him for each opportunity to live a life of peace. Shalom. There we go. And finally... You are the angels. In the story with the shepherds, the angels came pronouncing the message, peace on earth. Uh, but in, as the story continues, it becomes plain that the angels, the messengers, after Jesus' death and resurrection, is us. We're the angels. We're the messengers. And which is why that word evangelism uh, literally means a good message. And the people who spread the good message are good messengers, evangelists. <laughs> it's a, the word angel is in the name. So there you go. You are all the angels. And you show that by living the shalom, living the way of peace of Jesus Christ, overcoming the sinful part within us, and we all have it, and um, dwelling on and developing all those good attributes we just talked about. So the shalom has begun, the peace of Christ is reigning and it has begun with us and over the years through church communities far and wide and across the planet through church communities far and wide, the shalom is being spread. The peace of God to the world is happening now and it's happening through you. Can I pray for you? Let us pray.
The Lord, some of us are, are pessimists and we look at ourselves and we see all that we do wrong. And some of us are optimists and we just look at our lives and, and linger over all the things we do right. But our, our God, you call us to be clear-eyed realists, to see both aspects of ourselves and to work on both. So I just pray your blessing on this community today. Those gathered here uh, at Living Faith Church and those uh, gathered uh, online who have come once again, as do we all, to offer ourselves to you. Lord, continually renew us that we may be a people of shalom, a good witness to the wider community that there is an alternative to the rat race, to selfishness. There is an alternative, and it all begins with you. Thank you, our God, for your kindness to us. May it continue to flourish and bring good fruit in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing Silent Night, which reflects once again on the peace of God. You stand with me and sing. serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Right now there's a song as you leave called Oh Holy Night. You might like to stay and sing along with it if you like on the video or just listen. It's a beautiful carol, hard to sing, but enjoy. The stars. 
stars are brightly shining It is the night of our dear Savior's birth Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope The weary world rejoices For yonder breaks A new and glorious morn Fall on your knees Oh, he Christ was born. Oh, night divine. Oh, night. Oh, night divine. True. Taught us to love one another. His law is love, and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother. Name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise. We let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. Oh, praise His name forever. His power and glory yeah. evermore proclaim. was born oh, night divine oh, night.